Hi, it's Gavin again. I'm still building a Sun XP and this is part 2. So, welcome back to Gavin's Sun XP build. This is the second video and uh, today we're mostly going to be looking at starting to make the vertical stabilizer. Now last time we were making the rudder and now the rudder is fully riveted and complete and ready to rock and roll so that will be going into uh, storage for a while whilst it waits for the rest of the aircraft which could be some time so what are we going to do next well on our plan we're working up this little set of boxes on the right from the bottom upwards um, we've started with the rudder and the next bit is the vertical stabiliser, the rest of the tail effectively. Um, and so I've got the drawings out. There are two primary drawings for the parts and um, about 14 pre-made pre parts there. Um, some of them need some work done to them, others are pretty much complete apart from drilling out to size for riveting. The first part we're going to be working on is the Ford spar fitting and this comes basically as a, uh, a laser cut slab of aluminium which we have got to put a 35 degree bend in to start off with. And then the other bits that need some work done on them are the main spar aft strap, which is this long piece here. That needs um, drilling. Um, all the uh, pilot, well, the, each hole is spotted but not drilled. So we've got to drill that lot in there. And then I think we've got a couple of hinges to uh, to cut to length. Um, and then we're pretty much there, I think. Um, and we should be able to um, start the assembly. So without further ado, we'll move outside into the garage um, where I've got my 10-ton ten, ten hydraulic press. And we'll have a go at putting the 35 degree bend into the Ford spar fitting. So here we are in the garage. That's the messy workbench. There's the JBA Falcon kit car I built about 10 years ago. And right down, oh, and here are some pieces of Sonics. We've got the. Uh, um, I think that's the shield that goes over the top of the dashboard um, near the uh, windscreen. We've got the top and bottom fiberglass mouldings for the engine cowling. And uh, underneath these are, is a big packing crate. It's 10 feet long by 4 feet wide. Um, and inside that are all the skins for the wings and the fuselage, etc. All flat. There's uh, several layers of them, all inside a very flat packing case. And of course the canopy. Um, because uh, we are overseas, um, Sonic's... Um, insist that you buy two so I imagine that uh, <laughs> they're expecting you to mess one up anyway down the far end here is the hydraulic press and you can see I've put the uh, part in the press it's sitting on two blocks of wood and I'm using an inch diameter socket in fact it's a spark plug socket um, placed in the position where I want to put the bend. It's supposed to be a half inch radius bend so we've got a one inch diameter 
outside diameter socket on there and um, I'm going to pump away and uh, I've made myself a little template so I know when I've got to 35 degrees so it's taken about five goes to uh, to get it to the right angle but uh, that is at 35 degrees now and uh, I've released the pressure and checked it against the template and all is good so we'll be going back to the workshop to uh, get on with the next bit so here we are back in the workshop we're currently on uh, T12 and we've bent the forward spar fitting and we've pilot drilled the main spar aft strap and that all took us about 45 minutes in total to do that so we'll be moving on to T10 which is the drawing on the other side where we've got to make a couple of hinges well very quickly in about uh, 15 minutes from having a pile of bits uh, we now have a silver clee code tail fin skeleton which looks a bit like that it went together reasonably well apart from the top rib here the front holes were slightly out of line so I've had to re-pilot drill those just to get them to line up and they'll be fine once they've been opened out to uh, the proper size for the rivets so there we go one tail fin assembly so what I shall do now is um, drill it out and get it ready for riveting after two hours of work um, we now have our riveted vertical stabiliser and it looks pretty good quite pleased with that it's all all together and uh, all riveted up nicely and so now the next thing to do is to put the skin on it and there's the skin the tail skin is all laser cut precision laser cut to uh, to size and it's all pre-piloted with hundreds of little holes most of the um, framework is also pre-drilled apart from a little leading edge rib and the top rib which has got to be drilled when the fiberglass cap goes on so stay tuned we'll see how it goes with the skin one tail skin on that wasn't actually as uh, difficult as I thought it was gonna be um, it went on reasonably easily most of the holes lined up there are a couple that were a fraction out so I've um, re-drilled them um, and they'll be fine once they're taken out to full size for the rivets um, but relatively uh, easy I would say it's really uh, a two-person job but you can do it as a one person 
um, as long as you use a nice big piece of wood and basically I used this piece of wood to hold it down and move across as I clecoed it and it went pretty well really I'm very pleased with it here is the uh, the tail fin all drilled out to the right size and uh, copper clecoed ready to rivet the only problem is I've just had a look at putting the tip on there's a glass fiber tip which is this part here and it sits on there and what the uh, T08 drawing tells you to do is to rivet where I've got all the copper uh, clecos at the moment but leave out the top rivets in this area here that's still just pilot drilled at the moment and then it implies um, that you would fit the glass fibre tip at some point later well luckily I just had a go at <laughs> inserting the tip between the skin and the top rib there's a little gap there and it will not go in and the reason it won't go in is that right at the front here this piece of the uh, top rib is far wider than the gap at the top of or the bottom of the uh, the tip molding and I've looked at a couple of videos of other people who've done this and I noticed that they've changed the design of this top rib it looks like the original rib was reduced in size at the tip and there was a little snub nose sticking out of the end so it, it sort of came along and then reduced at 90 degrees and then went along and this was obviously to give a bit of um, a bit of a space to get this in so what I've decided to do is that top rib is really just too long because the last rivet is there the glass fibre is far stronger than the rib anyway and is going to be giving us most of our uh, strength at the tip so what I'm going to do is I'm going to chop off about 10 mil off the end um, or half an inch well just under half an inch for those uh, of you who still work in Imperial um, and I think that will actually do the job unfortunately I've got to take the skin off to do it so it's going to take a little while to unclico it chop it off clean it up and re cleco it again but I'll let you know what happens And there we go. I actually compromised and cut six millimeters, a quarter of an inch off the end of the rib, and uh, it slipped in there really easily. So uh, sorted. Wow! There we go. One tail fin for a Sonax B, all riveted up, and. Uh, complete hasn't got its uh, glass fiber tip on yet but I'm gonna save that and do all three when I do the uh, horizontal stabilizer as well it's looking good I think uh, it's all gone very well I haven't managed to dent it or do anything antisocial um, and it's pretty straight and nice and shiny I'm very pleased with it it's taken 13 hours to construct um, and the rudder uh, took 12 hours 
this was a bit more complicated so I think I must be speeding up so that's the second part for the aircraft complete so now I have a rudder and a tail fin woohoo so what's next I hear you ask well we're going to be building the horizontal stabilizer so the horizontal bits of the tail section so stay tuned and we'll see what happens over the next week. See you later.